Hey guys, Andy here and in today's quick video, I want to explain the requirements necessary to sit for the Greenbelt exam before you go on this journey and put in all this effort into the preparation process. I want you to feel confident that, that you're eligible to sit for the exam and that you're good to go. Alright, let's head over to the computer and get started. Alright, let's get into today's video. Remember, we're talking about requirements to sit for the ASQ Greenbelt exam. Here's what I want to talk about today. So I want to start by talking about the requirements to sit for the exam. There's a few nuances you have to understand about years of experience. I do want to talk about educational waivers. Other ASQ exams allow for educational waivers for those particular requirements. So I want to cover those, make sure you wear that. We also need to talk about the body of knowledge. These requirements to sit for the exam require that your experience be in one of the areas of the body of knowledge. So I couldn't leave you with this video without explaining what the body of knowledge is and, and what are the basic concepts and, and principles within it so that you can know whether or not your experience aligns with the body of knowledge. The last thing I want to give you is an epic and free resource if you want to go on this journey to become a green belt. I've got a ton of great resources that can help you along the way. So stick around to the end because I want to share that with you and let's jump into it. What are the requirements to sit for the Greenbelt exam? Here they are. You have to have three years of on-the-job experience in one or more of the areas in the Greenbelt body knowledge. I've got an asterisk here about on-the-job experience because there is a caveat here. This has to be a full-time paid role. If you've got paid internships or co-ops, those don't count. Your experience only counts if it is in a full-time paid role. The other thing that's important to, to know here is this idea of, or this concept of, educational waivers. And unfortunately, for the Greenbelt exam, educational waivers are not granted. Now, you might be asking, Andy, what do I do if I don't have three years of experience? My best recommendation is to sit for the Yellow Belt exam. So the Yellow Belt exam or the Yellow Belt certification does not require any years of experience to sit for that exam. So it's a great place to start your growth journey to become a Green Belt, to become a Black Belt. I highly recommend uh, becoming a Yellow Belt first. Now, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, Andy, I do have three years of experience, but I'm not sure if it's in the Green Belt body of knowledge, I want to talk about that now. Here is the body of knowledge. So high level, there are six pillars in the body of knowledge. It follows Demaic, by the way. There's an overview section with three chapters, and then it's define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And what I've done is I've highlighted a few of what I would describe as probably the most popular concepts or topics within each of these pillars to help you understand whether or not your experience falls into these. Any, If you've ever used Demaic, if you've ever spent time on a process improvement team, if you've ever used Demaic, your experience counts towards the body of knowledge. If you've ever been involved in value stream mapping or design for Six Sigma, any project management experience at all, if it's related to process improvement or Kappa, all that experience counts. The seven QC tools, 8D and 5Y, all that root cause analysis, any time spent solving a quality problem is experience that counts towards the green belt body of knowledge. If you've ever used lean tools, so here in the, in the improve phase, it's real heavy on lean tools, 5S, Kanban's, Kaizen, just in time, all those lean tools that you're familiar with. If you've ever used lean tools in your career, your experience in that role applies towards the three year requirement. If you've ever used Six Sigma tools, right? And that could be anything. Again, it's not just Demaic, it's any sort of hypothesis testing, linear regression, statistics, control charts, TPM, OEE, probability, gauge RR, &R, any of these really common uh, root cause analysis or Six Sigma or lean principle tools. Any of that experience counts towards the green belt body of knowledge. All right, so if you're sitting there thinking, Andy, I definitely had the experience. I'm ready to keep going on this journey. I've got a ton of great resources to share with you. If you go over to greenbeltacademy.com, I've got practice exams. I've got study plans. I've got cheat sheets. I've got all sorts of free resources. I also have free courses. So I've got two free courses. I've got one that covers the top 10 most important topics on the Greenbelt exam. If you want to sign up for free, it's greenbeltacademy.com slash free course. I cover a bunch of the most important topics in the exam. If you want to learn more about that without having to sign up, by the way, I'll link in the description to another video I have walking you through those 10 topics. How did I pick them? Why do I think they're the most important? Also, when you when you get here to greenbeltacademy.com slash free course, I've got another free course on the, the 14 new tools that are being added to 
the green belt body of knowledge here in, in August. Of so again, check that out. I've got a ton of free resources. I would love to help you on your journey to become a CQE. The other thing you can do is hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be publishing new videos every week. And so if you want to stay on that journey, hit the subscribe button. That way you get notified when those videos publish and you can continue learning and continue growing. All right, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.